Hello everyone. Um, okay, so it's the early hours of the 6th of February 2021. Um, I want to just do a little video on kind of my future in YouTube and um, the channel. Um, I'm not I'm not closing this channel immediately or something like that. So that's not what this is about. But I do think. Um, it's worth kind of reflecting on where I am with this as a creator. I've just filled in a YouTube survey. It took about 15 minutes. Um, and I wanted to do that because I do have a few grievances with this company at the moment. Um, it might sound ungrateful because I'm using the platform, but it is creators that helped build this company. I, I'm a very, 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 very small keg in a very, very, very big machine. But um, I do feel that there are issues that need to be addressed. So, for example, um, monetization. I don't know if any of my subscribers are creators themselves. Um, I think some of you are. And you'll know that if you want to be monetized, YouTube has recently come up with this sort of self-regulation system. I'm not quite sure how to term this. But um, I, I was quite candid about my frustrations with that. Um, and I've even taken to the point now of just not monetizing some videos. Um, I mean, certain subjects I cover, for example, my last video, the one I've just uploaded, was about the Uyghur situation in China. Now, that's a serious issue. It's involving human rights. It's involving um, potential genocide. These are, are heavy issues. And I, I personally don't really want them to be monetized in the sense of, you know, when I'm talking about Uyghur women being raped and then some ad comes up for Grammarly or something, it just seems a little bit, I don't know, maybe I'm old fashioned. Um, my videos, I think probably 70% of them can be categorized as serious subjects. Uh, some are just a bit more educational. Um, I, you know, anyone who's subscribed to my channel for a while now will know what I'm about. I cover topical issues. I cover uh, socio-political issues. And I don't shy away from controversial issues. As I think in a free society, we have to have the ability and the freedom to talk about these things openly. Um, but, you know, if you know anything about this monetization system, what they do is they give you these categories. So, for example, um, does my video fall under controversial content? But the way they've designated that is um, explicit references to terrorist attacks or um, child pornography and other such controversial areas. Now, I might discuss a terrorist attack if it has just happened. I never talk about child pornography, not because I think it's off limits, just because I don't. Um, but what I'm driving at is the way they categorize things is um, very restrictive and they have this absurd category called hateful content. Now, this isn't really about hateful content because they then have subcategories like content that references a marginalized group but is used as part of a public debate. So, for example, if I was talking about Black Lives Matter, it obviously references a marginalized group. But I'm not saying I hate black people. I'm not stirring up hatred against black people. I'm criticizing aspects of a movement. Um, and it, what's immensely frustrating is YouTube's failure to use common sense and see how that isn't hateful content. So they have this catch all. And you might think, oh, well, Nathan, just don't put it under that category. But the problem is, if I put it under, like, uh, they have a little box of none of the above then I will be penalized for not monetizing correctly because I haven't monetized or put my video under the category YouTube obviously feels it belongs. So, you know, it would be helpful if they actually told me what category they think my video falls under and why. They don't. They just say you've got low ratings on this. Although I have to say the last time I checked, all my ratings were good, but you know, recently it's just come up. You have low ratings. Be careful how you're... It, it just feels like Big Brother. 
feels like 1984. Uh, it's very, very restrictive. So as a creator, I'm pretty frustrated by that. Now, that then brings me to the next point. If, I, if I'm if i finding the process of monetizing too stressful and too restrictive, um, then what am I getting out of this? Well, firstly, I'm very grateful to my subscribers. Um, I never went into YouTube as a financial thing. I never went into it for, oh, I can make some money with this. In fact, they approached me. Um, I think it was a branch of the Huffington Post, and they had some sort of a, um, partnership with... Um, I, I forget now because I'm no longer a part of that, but um, they actually approached me and I had a Skype conversation with these two uh, women in Toronto who were part of the... You know, they were representatives and they told me about the whole monetizing situation. And at the time I said, well, how much flexibility do I have on this? Can I openly state my mind? And they were doing a bit of flattery. They, oh, we like the way you're so honest and so on. But it kind of fell flat because at the time I was making a bit of money, a couple of pounds a month, but it really wasn't anything extraordinary. Now, I haven't checked my monetizing of late. I can't imagine it's that much more. Um... But I thought, you know, if I get paid for for doing something I enjoy doing, then why not? Well, why not? Extra money, that's great. Uh, I'm sure that some YouTubers have become millionaires because it went viral. Now, I have a fairly good idea why my videos aren't viral. Because I just talk. I don't have any special graphics or special, you know. Um, some people have advised me to, you know, oh, look at this guy, he does jokes. But that's that's not me. It's not what I do. You can't. You can't be something that you're not just to try and get success. I just think that's ultimately counterproductive. Um, as it stands, I've got about 1,700 subscribers, which I think is a, a nice little number. It's um, it's a lot more than some people, and it's, you know, I wouldn't say my channel is massively successful, but as long as someone somewhere in the world is watching my content and maybe thinking about the things I say, then it's worth it in that sense. And I do get some pretty positive feedback. Um, I'm going to name drop a few people here, but uh, Thomas, Declan, um, you guys, are, and there's others. Apologies if I'm leaving anyone out. Um, you know, the sort of feedback that you give me, um, I'm very grateful for that. It keeps me going. Um, why do I do this? I do it because I think that if something needs to be spoken about, it needs to be spoken about. Issues I feel strongly about, like human rights, um, I'm not the only one doing it, but if I could just contribute a little bit more to spreading awareness, debate, those sort of things, I, I think it's worth it. And in a slightly selfish way, you know, I, I like the platform. I like the opportunity of being able to basically say what I want. Now, if I don't monetize videos, then that will free me in some ways. I could pretty much say as I please other than making threats, which I never do. Um, so, in terms of the future, I am, I know I've said this before, I keep getting busy. At some point, I really am going to look through this channel and you might find some of my older videos get deleted simply because I feel I've maybe covered a subject a bit repetitively or maybe the quality is not great, the sound isn't great. Um, I want to just polish it up a little bit, tidy it up a little bit, um, and you know I'm not, I'm not going to sort of self censor. I'm not going to be in a situation where I'm saying I'm not going to talk about that because I don't want to be demonetized. I'd rather not get monetized and talk freely than be monetized and have to be really, really careful. On that point, I do understand that advertisers, you know, have their their backs to look out for, I get that. But I do sometimes think YouTube put too much focus on the advertisers and not enough on creators. Whether they take on board my feedback or not, I don't know. I'm always a bit skeptical of those sort of things. So think, well, is an actual human being going to be reading this? Or is it like some sort of automated system? I, I don't know enough about the technical side to know that. Um if I find I'm successful in life outside YouTube and in some bizarre set of circumstances I become a public figure, then simply by virtue of being a public figure, I might find that these videos automatically start getting more attention, which would be a very interesting development. Um, 
it goes without saying, feel free to share my videos if you like them. Um, now, regards to comments, um, I do try to get back to comments as much as possible. I can't promise I will reply to each and every single comment. Um, this is partly because of time issues. Life has got busier. Um, you know, I don't spend all my time on this. Uh, and also because I've always seen the comment section as, as a way of allowing subscribers to just have their say, um, you know, maybe counter things the creator is saying. Um, that's how I see it. But I, I've never seen a comment section necessarily as a debate thread between creator and subscriber. What I try to do is I try to get back to comments, but I don't. You know, it would just imagine if I had a long, ongoing debate with each and every single comment. It would just be so time consuming. It wouldn't be practical. It would take away my time from creating content. So I try to be respectful and get back to people. But you know, if if I don't reply to your comment, please understand that's the reason why. Um, demographics probably most of my subscribers are um guys between. 20 and 40, uh, some older guys. Um, and I, I know I have female subscribers, not as many, if I'm being honest. Not sure if they're just if there's a gender discrepancy in the issues I talk about. If I, I actually on that point, if you are a woman, uh, please give me some feedback as to why you think maybe fewer women watch my videos. Um, and I'll try and take that on board as much as possible. I'm not going to sort of reach a 50-50 situation, but I don't want to polarise people either. Um, yeah, uh, and that's it really. Um, I'm going to keep doing this. I have no reason not to. I'm not breaking any laws. I'm not. Sometimes I'm politically incorrect. I touch on controversial subjects because I'm adamant that these issues need to be discussed. And I do feel that in Western society right now, we are in a situation where freedom of speech isn't guaranteed. I often speak about the relative freedom of this country. I say relative because I don't think we can necessarily take it for granted. And when you see increased legislation over um, controversial speech, there are some important questions around that. Um, what else? Uh, I always try to put a link, if I'm talking about a news item, I'll try to put a link to the article. Where possible, I will quote the journalist. Um, so it's not plagiarism, so you know, that's their work if I'm reading out from an article. Um, I always put links just so that people can do a bit further reading on what I'm talking about. Um, and if I do get something wrong, maybe I've said something inaccurately. If I notice that, I will put an amendment. If it goes over me, if I, if I ever say something that's factually wrong, uh, please feel free to draw my attention to that and I will amend it in a disclaimer below or something like that. So uh, please do let me know if I've said something that is just actually wrong. I'm not talking about opinions, obviously, but something that's factually wrong. Um, okay, I'll leave it there. Uh, there's not much more to say, but basically, thank you. Thank you to everyone for your support. Um, as for trolls, thank you as well, because all that, you know, if you're coming to my channel to call me names, uh, you're obviously interested in me, so I, I find that quite amusing. And to my supporters and subscribers, uh, just thank you for your support. I, I, I do think it's, um, you know, it is a nice idea that I could be saying these things to someone in um, Virginia or Toronto or turkey or wherever it's just listening to my voice and that's not special these days but it's yeah it's quite a satisfying feeling um okay thank you everyone